What we have here is we have a bucket of water, two liters of it, which is 2,000 grams of water, starting at 20 degrees centigrade. We dump into that bucket of water an aluminum block, 500 grams of it at 100 degrees centigrade, and a block of ice, 100 grams of it at minus 20 degrees centigrade. And of course, when it all comes together, they'll be exchanging heat, and at some point, they will all uh, finish up at some final temperature, and what they want us to do is find what that final temperature will be. Now, one difficulty to this problem is that we don't know if the final temperature will be greater than 20 degrees centigrade or smaller than 20 degrees centigrade. And I have a hunch that the ice will have more of an effect on the temperature than the hot aluminum, and so I'm going to assume that the final temperature is going to be less than 20 degrees centigrade. And if my assumption is wrong, we'll get an impossible answer, and therefore we then will do the problem again, and then we'll assume that the temperature final will be greater than 20 degrees centigrade. But I'm pretty sure that it's less than 20 degrees centigrade, so let's find out. Again, to do a calorimetry problem, what you want to do is say that all the items that are gaining heat, so whoop, there's my pen here, Q gained must equal Q lost. So all the things gaining heat must equal all the things that are losing heat. So now we just have to figure out what's gaining heat and what's losing heat. Well, the ice will be gaining heat. First of all, the ice will go from minus 20 to zero. So we need MC delta T for the ice plus the heat gained by the ice when it melts into water, so that would be M times the latent heat of fusion for the ice, plus now the ice that's now turned into water will then gain temperature or gain heat until it reaches the final temperature, which will be greater than zero, so it'll be MC delta T for the cold water. So cold, cold H2O, uh, that would be the ice turned into water that now reaches the final temperature. All right, that's all gaining heat. What's losing heat will be the aluminum. That would be the MC delta T for the aluminum. And then the water in the bucket, because if it ends up uh, being the final temperature being less than 20 degrees centigrade than the final temperature, then of course the water needs to lose heat. So it'll be uh, plus MC delta T for the water in the bucket. All right, so notice that every term is, needs to be positive. It doesn't matter what side of the equation it's on, it's on because the way we start with the equation, Q gained equals Q lost, demands that every term in here has to have a positive quantity. So now let's plug in what the delta T's are in each case. So for the ice, initially, the MC delta T, so it goes from minus 20 to zero. That's a change of 20 degrees centigrade, so we can put in 20 here. This is the ice plus M L sub F, that doesn't change because there's no temperature there, plus the difference in temperature of the cold water, which means the ice turned into water at zero degrees centigrade now reaches the final temperature. So this has to be M C uh, T final minus zero. That, of course, would be the difference in the temperature of the cold water. So this is uh, cold water, or I can say uh, the ice turned into water. All right, uh, so this is... Uh, Mm, that can be dangerous to say ice, so I'll just call it cold water, cold H2O, equals, now MC delta T for the aluminum, so that would be, um, let's see, we want that to be a positive quantity, so it starts out at 100, so we go 100 minus T final. That will be a positive quantity, and it'll be the difference between the initial and final temperature of the aluminum. And then here we have plus MC, that would be 20 minus T final, assuming that T final is less than 20, and this would be for the water in the bucket. All right. So now notice that I have three terms that have a T final in it. So I have a T final over here, I have a T final over here, I have a T final over there. So what I want to do now is somehow isolate T final on one side, which means I first have to get rid of all the parentheses. So let's then write the next line. So we have MC times 20. So let me write 20 MC for the ice plus M L sub F, that's for the ice, plus M C T final for the ice, which is turned into water, so that will now be H2O, not ice, uh, equals 100 M C, that would be for the aluminum, I better write aluminum here so I don't forget, so this is for the aluminum, uh, minus M C for the aluminum times T final, plus 20 MC for the H2O, and minus uh, MCT final for the H2O.
All right, I always want to use notation so I know which, what each term means. So now I'm going to take all the terms with the T sub F and move it to the left side of the equation. So on the left side, I will have an MC T sub F of the uh, ice that turned into water, so that's uh, maybe cold water, cold H2O. Bring this term across, that becomes positive, plus MC of the aluminum times T final. Bring this term across, that would be plus MC T final of the H2O on the bucket, equals, so now I have all the terms with T sub F on the left side, I need to move everything else to the right side. So uh, let's see, this was already there, so that's 100 MC of aluminum. Over here I have plus 20 MC of the water, that's the water in the bucket. And then I move, uh, let's see, this term across, because uh, that one doesn't have a T sub F in it, so that becomes minus 20 MC of the ice. Remember, that's when the ice goes from minus 20 to zero, so that still has to be a specific heat of ice. And then I have the M ML, so that becomes minus ML, uh, latent heat of fusion. So that takes care of these two terms. And then I have this one right there, and I have this one right there, and I think I'm good. So all the terms in the proper place. Let's just make sure I didn't forget any. I have one, two, three four, five, six, seven terms. I have one, two, three on the left, and one, two, three, four on the right. Just want to make sure. Next thing what I want to do is factor out a T sub F. So I can put T sub F here, put parentheses around that, and get rid of the T sub F like that. And then the final thing is, if I then divide both sides of the equation with this portion right here, if I move that over here, so let's draw a line. And let's move these three in there. So this MC, of the cold water, cold H2O, and a plus MC of aluminum, and have a plus MC of the water in the bucket, plus MC of the H2O in the bucket. So if I have H2O, that means the water in the bucket. If I have cold water, that means the water that was iced before that turned into water. And now this whole thing is now set equal to T final. So now I can come up here and write T final is equal, and I'm going to plug in all the numbers corresponding to these variables. So here we're dealing with aluminum, that's the mass of the aluminum and C of the aluminum. So it would be 100 times 500 times the C of aluminum, which is 0 0.215 in terms of calories per gram per degree centigrade. This is, of course, 500 grams plus 20 MC H2O. Now, H2O means that's the water in the bucket. So that's uh, plus 20 times 2,000, because I have 2 liters of it, which is 2,000 grams, uh, times the specific heat of water, which is 1. Uh, right here, minus 20 mc of ice. So that, that is the, the ice. That's, uh, so we have minus 20 times the mass of the ice, which was 100 grams, times c of the ice, which is 0.5. Okay, so now we're taking, taking care of that one. Minus this. So minus the mass of the ice, which is 100, times 80, which is the latent heat of fusion for ice. So now I've taken care of everything in the numerator. And I take that and divide that by everything in the denominator, which is the mass of the cold water. Remember, the cold water is the mass of the ice that turned into water, which is 100, times C of the cold water, which is 1, plus the mass of the aluminum, times the C of the aluminum, which is 0 0.215, plus the mass of the water in the bucket, which is 2,000, times the C of that water, which is 1. OK, now I need my calculator, which is right here. But before we use that, we could probably simplify a little bit. So this is equal to um, 100 times 500. So that would be um, 50,000. So that's 50,000 times 0 0.215 plus 20 times 2,000, that's 40,000 times 1, uh, minus 20 times 0.5 is 10 times 1,000 times 100 is 1,000, minus 1,000, minus 8,000. All divided by, that would be 100, plus 500 times 0 0.215, plus 2,000. And simplifying things just a little bit more, 
So I have 40,000 minus 9,000, that's 31,000. So this is equal to 50,000 times 0 0.215 plus 31,000, which means uh, there's a 3. That's 40,000 minus 9,000 divided by 100 plus 2,000, that's 2,100. So it would be 500 times 0 0.215 plus 2,100. Okay, now it's a little bit simpler to put into the calculator, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have 50,000 times 0.215 plus 31,000 equals. Now we divide that by the combined quantity of 500 times 0.2, that should be 15, not 251, 15 plus 2,100 close parentheses, equals, and I get 18.9 T final. So first of all, of course, that would be centigrade degrees, and my assumption was correct. I was expecting it to be less than 20, which is correct, and therefore I don't have to do the problem again, which is good, because it's a long problem. And um, it looks like it gave us the right answer. Now, let's go and go back and again see what we did here. So we have three things. We have a bucket of water, a hot block of aluminum and a cold block of ice. We dump the ice and the aluminum into the bucket. They're going to exchange heat and we're going to end, to end up with a final temperature. We need to first make a guess whether or not the final temperature will be less or more than 20 degrees centigrade because if it's less then the water in the bucket will lose heat. If it's more then the water in the bucket will gain heat. So the, it, it all came down to whether or not the ice would have more of an effect or the aluminum, and I was assuming the ice would have more of an effect, so therefore I expected a lower final temperature. Then you say Q gained equals Q loss. That's a really important concept. And then you look at all the things that are gaining heat and all the things that are losing heat. And you have to break it out into the various phases. First of all, the ice gained heat by going from minus 20 to zero, which is right here. Then it gained heat by changing phase to water, which is this term right here. Then it gained some more heat until it got to the final temperature, which is this term right here. So, the, so on the left side, there's three things that are gaining heat. Even though it's the same thing over and over again, you have to break it out into three separate turns because this is the ice getting warmer, this is the ice melting, this is the cold water getting warmer. Then what is losing heat? Well, the aluminum is losing heat. And the water in the bucket, which ends up at a lower temperature, will also be losing heat. Make sure these terms are all positive. To do that, you want to make sure that the delta T is always a positive quantity. So this is a 20 degree difference, positive. This will be T final minus zero, because T final, 18.9, is bigger than zero. Here, 100 minus T final, because 100 is bigger than T final. So you want to write it like this, to be a, so that this is a positive quantity. And then he, right here, 20 minus T final, because you made the assumption that T final was less than 20 again, to make it into a positive quantity. And then the rest is all algebra. Solve this equation for T final, plug in the numbers, get the right answer. And that's how you do a calorie problem like that.